Descent. Journeys in the Dark. Second edition. Hey, what is up everyone? This is Grubasex, Roger. And first of all, thank you for viewing. And I hope everyone is enjoying their summer, enjoying your games, and just enjoying life. I, I wish all you the best as always. Nice to talk to you. So I'm gonna tell you before I bought Descent two weeks ago, I typed that into Google, Descent. Can you solo Descent? Can you play Descent solo? So after watching Rodney at um, Watch It Play to get the nitty gritty on the gameplay and the guy over at Crits Happen, they do a phenomenal job on uh, doing a tutorial. So um, this will be kind of a tutorial, um, sort of. You might want to watch them and come back to this, but I noticed there's a lot, a lot of people who love to solo board games, play them solitaire, I'm one of them. And I was on the fence about this, as I think a lot of people are. And I want to say, at least for me, you know, I'm doing the whole Dungeon Crusade game for Kickstarter. Um, I'm aiming at a solo crowd. I think you can play this game solo, and I think it lends itself really nice to doing so. Um, now, this is our secret here. Shh, don't tell my wife. Um, I went kind of descent crazy the last week, and I bought more monsters and heroes and these lieutenants and expansions and all this stuff. I, I really love this game. I think Fantasy Flight Games did a great job. So let's, shh, don't say anything about that. Anyway, what, what I'm going to show you here is the vanilla game, and I'm going to hopefully do a playthrough. And the guy over at Crits Happen did what we're going to play today is the quest, um, a fat goblin. And but I'm going to do he did this one here, and I'm going to kind of do a continuation of um, the encounter too, like the finale, if you will, where the heroes start here in the entrance, and they have to make it through and kill Splig, and Splig is right here. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what I'm hopefully going to do today and show you how to how I, at least I play this solo. And there are some great variants out there that change the game a bit. But what you're going to see is Vanilla Descent, the groovest way to play it solo, if you will. Now, let me explain something before we get that. Actually, let me show you this because a lot of people, I think, struggle with this. And this is something I do for Dungeon or I'm doing for Dungeon Crusade. When you get these... Um, you know, the tans are all just tan. There's no color coordination. I got some of my paint pens and I dotted all of my tan guys. Reason being, when say like the spider's here and it takes damage, you have to take two hearts, say he took two damage, lift up the spider, put two damage there, put him back. These battles get crazy in this game. I mean, it is like a cluster of heroes and monsters is battling. So what I did was, that whining in the back you hear is Scooter and the new puppy Caesar. That's Caesar. You want to go out? Go. Come on, we got to get back to descent. So what I did, guys, was this, and you may want to do something like this. Grab some paint pens, dot your tan guys, and then if you notice, let's go over here to the spider, the cave spiders. Um, up here, there's stats: green, red, and blue. What I did was say, like our red spider took two damage. I just take two hearts and put it right above the red, so I know, you know, the red spider took two. Let's say our green spider took one. Come over here to the green above it and you know put one there. That way it really, really, really helps to not keep this board cluttered up because believe me, you'll see in this battle, it gets pretty intense and you don't want to be lifting figures up and knocking stuff over. So that's just a little tip for you guys to do. Okay, so now I talk on the fly. I don't script anything, so bear with me. Now, in Descent, for most people, hopefully I won't, wait, oh, wait, one last thing. I had to call, I emailed Mr. Fantasy Flight Games because when I got my Descent, um, a zombie was missing his arm, which zombies are cool of missing their arms, right? They're zombies. But a few of my bar guests, um, they must have been having some battling in the box because their tails were snapped off. And um, when I emailed Mr. FFG, I let him know, you know, awesome game, but hey, there were some damaged pieces. Guys, I emailed these people at eight, eight o'clock yesterday morning, by noon, I had a response from Fantasy Flight Games saying, sorry, we're already sending your replacements. They already had the tracking and shipping out. Big props to Fantasy Flight Games. Really nice company, great customer service. Okay, it's back here, sorry, wanted to give a shout out to them. So we have our heroes here. We're set up um, to play the, the second encounter of the Fat Goblin. Now, I'm gonna, this is something you may choose to do. This is just me. I, when I play any games, Diablo 3, when I did play WoW, any of those kind of RPGs, I am always the heroic 
um, barbarian, warrior, crusader, two-handed battle axe, usually a chick with red hair and green eyes named Charcy. And I just go into battle and I, I, I want to kill evil. So for me, being a gamer, it's hard for me to associate being a bad guy. And in this game, you know, like there's, you know, either one or four people play the valiant heroes and then there is an evil overlord. And I have a problem with that because I'm not an evil guy. I'm a good, you know, I'm a do-gooder. So I needed something to represent the overlord, something of huge proportions of evil that I could glance at to say, this guy wants to kill these heroes. So I introduced to you Baylor. Honestly, I know this ain't kind of wacky, but honestly, when I put him there and I'm playing the Overlord side, in which I'm going to show you what we're going to do, it helps to look at something like this and think, I don't think he really wants to make the bad choice and let, give the, the heroes an easy time. So honestly, I put this thing here, and if I'm, as you're going to see how I play, it helps me come up with a strategy to kill the heroes. And it kind of gets me out of my groovous do-gooder, heroic kind of thing. So that's optional for you, but it does help for me. So we're going to have a special guest, Baylor, the Overlord. Okay, enough of the geek stuff. All right, so this video is, again, introduction. Um, go watch some of the tutorials to learn how to play, or stay here, and I think you might be able to pick it up. And um, everything is set up right now. I set it up prior, but I'm going to give you an example before we break away of how I set up um, maybe some of the monsters here, okay? Now in the book, it says for the cave spiders, there's this, some flavor text here. Um, basically, I'm gonna tell you, in this adventure here, see those, those are crops. The goblins were coming in from this entry point and they had to steal all the crops. My heroes came in from here and, and I had to save the crops and store them here. Um, the one I played before this, the um, goblins made off with two of those crops. And what that does is, that gives Splig two additional health. So Splig, we're playing three heroes, and um, instead of nine, he has 13 health, because um, it was two health per crop. So I wanted to explain that a little bit. So what we're doing here in um, our attempt to kill Splig is we have to get our heroes through this little dungeon to his lair and kill Splig. Meanwhile, Baylor or the Overlord, has these prisoners in here, as you can see. Now, one of these, there is three red ones, and there's one purple. The purple signifies a guy named Frederick, and he has to interrogate him. So what the Overlord's job is, or Gaylor's job is, is to find Frederick, throw him over his shoulder, and run the heck out of this dungeon before the heroes can kill him. So that's what you're gonna be seeing. And, what, and these goblins have to go to this prison here, open the door, and bring the prisoners out into this interrogation room. And you have to do a might check, a roll, um, to see if this is the prisoner that Splig is looking for. It'll make sense when we start playing it. So before I break away, I'm going to show you kind of like in Baylor's mind, when you have um, a group to set up, and guys who's familiar with this, this is the spider cave. So what I do is when I play, and this can be what you, what, I wanna make mention that what you see, you can apply to other quests, you know, to do the solitaire. So, um, so we could do it two, one of two ways, and I'm gonna let, these are, let's picture this, see that? These are the brains of Baylor. So what we roll is what he's thinking, if you wanna go that route. So what we do is we have to place the spider. So instead of me, thinking, okay, I'll put one here or here. I'm gonna let the dice decide, or his brains, or Baylor. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna count. Well, first of all, we could do a random setup, okay, where they just go anywhere, or the, spy the spiders are gonna pile in the back. So the heroes got to use a lot of their movement to get to them. So, hopefully you're following this. So let's just say this, on a one to three, the spiders are gonna pack up in the back. On a roll to four to six, they're gonna be placed randomly on a D20, with each square being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, blah, blah, blah. So we'll roll here. Okay, they're gonna be placed randomly. Now, I, I'll spare you this whole thing, but what basically we're gonna do is we're gonna take our master spider and roll. Four, so we count four spaces, one, two, three, four. Place him there. 
10. The 10 space would be 8, 9, 10, him there. Now, if you come up with that number again, you would just, you could just re-roll. 15, so it's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, right on that search token. Those are search tokens. And lastly, 18, I don't know if there's an 18. Well, that was 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, right in the front, okay. So there you go. So see, instead of me just saying, okay, I'm gonna put one here, here, I kind of let chance decide, or bail, or however you want to say it, whether the, the spiders would stack up here or they would be randomly placed. So um, come back, and then we're going to get this um, underway, and then you'll see. I think you'll like how this is played out and what I came up with, and hopefully it helps you guys um, decide if Descent is going to be for you. So come on back to Descent, Journeys in the Dark, second edition. Talk to you soon.